Good afternoon, one and all. Friday afternoon, and we're back home. Um, I do have a lot of editing to do. Um, I will be putting together a, together a video of my visit to northern Spain, the Cantabria region of Santander, and the and the, and the uh, environs, environs. <coughs> but I had a post office card waiting for me, and here's the box. Um, so I've cut it open, but not yet peeked inside. I have a suspicion that it's from John, um, a gentleman who offered me some um, Erin Moore, which he doesn't like. So here it goes. So we have a little Baro note, and it says, Hi Simon, please find enclosed as discussed. I will also put a bijou in for you to review when time permits. Regards, John. Cool. Lots of bubble wrap, that's for sure. So here we go. A tin of a sealed tin of bone more mixture. A sealed tin of flake, another tin of mixture, another tin of flake, and another tin of flake. Wow, John. Five tins, that's crazy. We also have a tin of Cornell and Dill Bijou, which I've not had before, I don't think. From 2018. What is this? Um, choice 2003 vintage Eastern North Carolina Red Virginia's crownless jewel, accented by sweet bright leaf and rounded by small leaf Caterini. Is that a is that a a Macedonian thing or something like that? Some Turkish possibly. Bijou is married with a hint of honey before being pressed and sliced into delicate flakes. This gem requires no adornment, just time. Estimated peak, 10 to 15 years. Well, well, this needs to be left to sit. Okay. We have another baggie in here. What's this? Oh, it's more of the mixture. Cool. Yep. John, this is super generous. Really, I'm lost for words here. And we have some Erin Moore Flake, which he started and obviously not enjoying. John, this is really super generous of you. Um, I do like Erin Moore, I've been smoking it a lot recently. This is intriguing. And these will go straight into my uh, rotation. John, thank you very much. I'm lost for words. I thought you were going to send me a couple of tins, but this is just uh, fantastic. Thank you very, very much. Um, please do send me your address so I can return fire. Um, other than that, in northern Spain, in Santander, believe it or not, I popped into probably about seven or eight tobacconists, um, and they're all sort of mostly kiosks and uh, generally just stock. Um, cigarettes, the very basic roll your own cigarette tobacco, and some run of the run of the mill pipe tobacco. Um, really, not the type of stuff that I would be smoking generally. Um, so the only one that I saw anything which um, uh, looked like some good quality tobacco was the first one that I went into, um, and they had some Samuel go with. But I, I really didn't get into. Um, you know, it was right on the high street, right in the middle of town, people coming in and out, language barrier, it just didn't make any sense for me to get into it. Um, so the actually only I, one item of tobacchiana that I bought was a cigar, and that was on the last day at a, a tobaccos which I discovered on the last day, and it was right under my nose, right next to the hotel we were staying at, which is a shame, because he actually had some nice cigars there as well. Once I do my video of the whole trip, um, you'll see that in there. There are a couple of clips of a couple of tobacconists. Anyway, I picked up one 
solitary cigar and I didn't even know I was in such a rush because we were just on the way to the airport literally I didn't know this was actually a bit of a gem and you had one more of these and I should have taken both but anyway this is a Trinidad I think this is a Robusto Extra if I'm not mistaken it's a 50 ring gauge by I think six or six and a half inches it's got a really nice aged aroma and I didn't realize what this was I thought this was a new Vitola um, and I didn't even look at the, this second band because I was in such a rush and it says on it, I saw afterwards collection vintage, which means this is probably the old Robusta Extra you can see the colour of the band is, bright, is lighter uh, probably due to it, the age of the cigar um, and it smells like it's got some age on it I think the wrapper is brighter than you would get nowadays as well um, I think I paid 18 or 19 euros for this um, which um, here um, I'm sure you'd pay uh, closer to 30 35 pounds and given that it's a vintage cigar you know maybe in, in a shop like Davidoff who generally has the biggest selection of vintage cigars um, you'd probably pay a lot more um, so that's it that's the only thing I bought the only tobacco related item I bought besides for a, a, a mini Bic and uh, that was it and the tamper I was gifted I forgot to take a tamper with me um, and that was it so that's it for today, for now anyway, um, as I say I've got a lot of editing to do, so I'm going to get cracking with that and, and I'll get the video uploaded as soon as I possibly can. And over the next um, few days, weeks, I guess I'll be getting into those samples, those uh, Gawath Hogarth samples that we got at the Nottingham Pipe Show. Um, the uh, Mixture 1820, which I did a, a video on the other day, um, I think it's really going fast at most of the tobacconists. So I wonder, I wonder whether this is going to be a similar situation here where we have to wait for a drop every so often or if it's going to become a regular Jermaine's feature in all of the websites. I have to say I, I had a quite a lengthy chat, an email chat with um, a gentleman from uh, the Backy shop from um, Black Swan um, Tobacconist. Um, and they were they were the ones who brought down all the samples on behalf of Gawath Hogarth. It wasn't Gawath Hogarth themselves. I don't think that came. Um, it was the it was the backy shop who was did some kind of collaboration with them to bring these into the market. That's what the impression I got anyway. Um, and uh, you'll see that in the video of the pipe show that I did, um, where he explains that. Um, in any event, I had a long chat with him by email, and um, it seems that. Um, actually I'm not sure my, my mind's gone blank anyway bottom line is that hopefully it'll be um, it'll be a regular feature not sure as yet but I hope it will be um, but it seems like uh, the shops are selling out already of it so if you do want to get some get cracking a word of warning make sure it's the 1820 flake because there is another blend called 1820 which I assume is similar, but apparently not the same precisely. Um, so if it's the Penzance version that you want, then it's 1820 Flake. Just uh, bear that in mind. Um, anyway, so that's it for now. Uh, and I will uh, get the Santander trip video done as soon as I can. Thanks, everybody. Catch you on the next one.